Let's talk from a security perspective the risks to our voice systems. I mean, in the old days we had the analog telephone and there was such thing as wiretapping, right? Most phone systems nowadays are actually truly digital. And then we have something that's really, really digital called voice over IP. And uh, as an IS auditor, we need to be aware of the risks. And there are vulnerability scans and checks we can do for voice systems. Once upon a time, an office would have one phone number. 1-800-555-1212, whatever the phone number was. And yet, there would be like 10 salespeople and different departments. And when a phone call would come in, there'd be a box right there connected to the phone line, and this box was the private branch exchange, the PBX. And the box then would go to the different extensions. And so when you'd come in, you'd make a phone call, the PBX would hold you, and then you'd hear this auto attendant say, for sales, dial 1, for you know help, dial 2, something. And then they'd press a number, and the PBX would then make a connection to over here. And it would basically route the call to whatever internal department or or if, if you know the uh, extension of the party you're trying to reach, please dial it now, and it, it would route the call. So we'd have one public phone number, and we'd have all these little extensions inside. That was the purpose of the PBX, rather than let everybody have their own phone number. We still have that, but we now also have a new implementation of that. So let's talk a little bit about the role of PBXs, as well as the role of voice over IP. Now, voice over IP, or sometimes called VoIP, this is a way actually of taking advantage of your existing network infrastructure and doing away with your old phone lines and using your existing network infrastructure to have voice calls. As I'm speaking right now, I'm generating sound and I'm generating audio sound. And as I speak, my speech can be divided down to the smallest units called a phoneme. It takes four IP packets to carry the smallest unit of sound, a phoneme, four IP packets. So what happens is my voice comes in to my headset, my VoIP phone, whatever, and there's some software or hardware that will take my voice sound waves and chop it up and sample it, sample it at a certain rate not unlike how we sample stuff that goes on a music CD, it's very, very similar in fact, samples it and captures it as digital information. And these samples then are placed as payloads in IP packets. And so then the IP packets are sent along on a regular network um, to a VoIP PBX, and then they're sent out to wherever they're sent. Obviously, this can create some security risks. We're, we're going to talk about this in just a sec. So let's talk about the old style PBX and VoIP and how we will integrate the two. Here is a diagram of sort of a typical integrated system. I have the internet here. I have the PSTN or public switched telephone network, sometimes called the POTS, the plain old telephone system. Just as this is the regular phone system. And then I have the internet. And then I have a company LAN here. Now, regular telephones, and forgive the image of the old style telephone, but regular telephones connect to the PSTN. And at the company side, the PBX is connected to the PSTN, and then you have different telephones going to sales in the different departments and different extensions. Also, connecting to the PSTN can be the IP PBX. And what that'll do is it'll take a VoIP phone, which looks like this, and it looks like just a fancy phone, but the cool thing about the VoIP phones is most of them have a little display and you can see who's calling, what room number they're in. Like I was at this hotel, it was really cool. Um, a, 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 a colleague of mine was calling from another room. I could see her name, I could see the room number, and I could see information about the call right there on this little display right here. Otherwise, it acted and sounded just like a normal phone. But my, my um, audio is actually not going as a regular voice circuit, it's going along as IP packets like this. So we can use the existing infrastructure. Now, in reality, you're probably dedicating virtual LANs or switches specifically to voice traffic because voice traffic is critical. It's, it's real time. You don't want to be intermixing it with file downloads and emails and this and that and the other because then the voice will get lost. It'll 
there'll be big delays, it'll get all choppy, there'll be jitter, which is variable delay, big delays, things will be lost, and the sound quality will be terrible. But nonetheless, we still use a network, typically dedicated in terms of a virtual LAN, um, we still use our IP infrastructure to send our voice calls. You can well imagine the risk to simply sending voice traffic across a common network. If you don't encrypt every one of these, I can very easily sneak in some little device to sniff or pick up that traffic and reassemble the voice and listen to your phone call. And um, it doesn't take much searching on the internet to hear examples of it and to see tools that you can use to do that. Most voice over IP products will now encrypt everything. So it's much harder to, to sniff that. But the original voice over IP protocols never had encryption built into them. It was something that was bolted on afterwards. So while we use voice over IP for convenience, and we can do away with our telephone system, our, our aging phone system, and just use our network infrastructure. We have to worry about performance, keeping it separate from other kinds of traffic, and also giving it always high priority, and uh, also encrypting it so that it can't be sniffed even in our own internal network. So these are the risks here. Now, it is possible, of course, to send voice over IP out through your firewall into the internet to be received by someone else. I just want to make a comment right now. If you choose to send voice over IP over the internet, because there is plenty of packet loss on the internet, because just of the complexity of the internet and routers get congested and whatever, you can expect a call quality to actually be very poor if you use the internet. I know a lot of businesses want to use the internet so they don't have to pay for a dedicated line from here to there, and they'll use the internet you can expect a 20% packet loss. Um, and I gotta tell you, from a human listening perspective, we notice at 1%. Now there are all kinds of packet loss concealment techniques to make up for that, but uh, you can expect choppy calls, poor quality, and you can also expect huge amounts of latency. Anyone who has ever used a headset to make a Skype call, which is a VoIP product, it's a free VoIP product, where you just use a headset and you use your computer to digitize your voice and send it. Anyone who's ever done that knows that just at any given moment the call quality can be poor because you never know what's happening to your packets as they go across the internet. So just realize that, that there can be performance issues. But businesses still like to use it because you save so much money. Also, not only the performance, but there's also going to be the um, uh, the security issues as well. You've got to make sure that it's encrypted and there are the performance issues. So these are all risks of integrating VoIP, voice over IP, with a regular phone system in your company. But the PBX itself also is at risk because the PBX is a box that typically you can dial into from an administrative perspective. Like whoever your vendor is, they can call the PBX itself, not some salesperson or admin person. They're calling the PBX itself to configure it. So many people leave those PBXs left in a default configuration. It doesn't take much searching on the internet to figure out default passwords and default codes to get into these things. And I mean, I've even seen financial institutions that had their PBXs hacked. Now, ordinarily, what people do is if they hack your PBX, what they generally do is they bounce their long distance international phone calls through your system and then suddenly you're stuck with the bill. So it tends to be more of that inconvenience as opposed to true um, security breaches. But still, if I can hack the PBX, there I can possibly um, maybe listen in on people's calls. So uh, there are all kinds of risks there. So the PBX, just like any other device, has to be locked down, no defaults, passwords changed, um, uh, nothing left open that unless it's really needed. And uh, that, that's the way we harden all devices. Now with voice communications, we have all kinds of vulnerabilities. So like for example, a war dialer. There are plenty of automated tools that takes very little searching on the internet to get these tools and to get a complete video tutorial on how to use it that will just automatically dial numbers until it finds one that answers and will automatically try to just break in. 
So we have this concept of war dialing, where we're just automatically dialing numbers with a hacking tool, trying to find one that we can break into. Or we have default system settings um, on the PBX. Or we can physically get in. Remember my story about um, we were working in a phone room and um, somebody was there before us and, and broke the wiring and we had to find another wire pair to connect the T1. And uh, voice over IP itself has its risks because you're sending IP packets across a common network. Even if it's a dedicated network, it's still a, a network that can be tapped into and sniffed. And then, of course, you have mobile devices. You have smartphones as well as these little cell phones here. Uh, all, all mobile devices, they all have a risk because when you're using a smartphone and a mobile device, it is basically connecting via radio wave. At that point, who knows who's listening in? So you've got to encrypt this, you've got to make sure there's authenticated connections, and um, you just can't send things in clear text. And there are always newer and newer tools that are coming out, hacking tools, that are coming out to break into these things, to find vulnerabilities, to find default settings, to um, basically uh, break in either to listen in on phone calls, to get contact lists off of phones. In fact, there's a, not too long ago, a highly publicized news story of a well-known pub, um, uh, public figure, uh, a well-known celebrity, I'm not going to name the person, who um, basically had her cell phone hacked and her whole contact list stolen. So um, we have to be aware of all of these things. And again, like I said, go to sans.org or one of these places and look for the, the top vulnerability threats and um, find tools that will help you scan and look for the open vulnerabilities on your mobile devices, on your VoIP system, and also on your PBX, your regular PSTN system. So the next thing we're going to talk about is intrusion detection.